السلام عليكم how are you ان شاء الله today we will start the fourth part in our lesson infectious diseases last time last three times we talk about what the infectious disease and what are pathogens then we talk about the germ theory and coaches experiments and what are the four postulates coaches what to establish and to be able to say about a microorganism this cause this disease then we said for any disease to spread it needs two things reservoir and a way of spread the, re the reservoir can be human animal or even non-living objects today we'll talk about the spread we are continuous to talk about the spread of disease and today what are the transmission of pathogen or what are the ways of spread we talk about the reservoir and today we'll talk about the ways of spread we have basically four ways of spread for that for any pathogen to transmit to humans or to spread it needs one of these four ways direct contact indirect contact through air indirect contact by objects or through a vectors so let's talk about one by one of these ways of spread if we talk about the direct contact we mean simply direct contact means direct contact means check hands touching wearing the same clothes this is direct contact we are in direct contact with each other so the pathogen can pass from one person to another through hands through breathing directly to talking to each other this make the breathing come out and in from each other so this is direct contact so the direct contact causes the human to spread the pathogen to another human or even if the pathogen is going to be transmitted from a, an animal to a human this can happen also by the direct contact between the human and this animal so diseases like flu hiv herpes and more and more diseases can be spread through the direct contact you can google and see more and more examples this is somewhere on the internet you can see this if we go to the indirect contact what does it mean it means first of all let's talk about indirect contact through air i'm sneezing coughing and i have flu what will happen the virus which causes the flu with the mucus droplets from my sneezing or from my coughing will spread all over the air surrounding me and this can pass from me to any person who is living or sitting with me in the same area breathing the same air so this how the indirect contact through air can happen through sneezing and coughing and that's what we are trying our best to take care of these days avoid to be in direct contact with people who are sick or even and as we said before uh, when we talk about the direct contact let's, let's back to direct contact when we are talking about direct contact we can say that some people are carrier as we know before carrier is a person that have the pathogen but he doesn't have any symptoms yet symptom free but he has the pathogen this person with the direct contact he can transmit the pathogen and spread it over and over and direct contact through air include sneezing and coughing as basics these two ways can spread the pathogen into the air and any person around me who is breathing the same air he can get the pathogen from the air and direct contact by object is what did i talk about it before when i said i can cough or sneeze on an object on a surface and this surface will carry the will, will carry the pathogen for few minutes or few hours according to the type of the pathogen another person will come and use the same surface i used before so he will get the pathogen from the surface so using the same objects can cause the disease to spread if the disease can live on the objects the fourth way and the last way of spreading the the disease or the pathogen is vectors what are vectors this is maybe this is the one we need to talk about a lot 
What is the vectors? The vectors is living things that can carry the disease from one person to another, from one object to another, but without being affected. So the vectors, so can I say the objects are vectors if I'm sneezing over a table and another person come and touch this table, he will, he will catch the flow. Is the table here is a vector? No, the vector is a living thing. Mostly it's arthropods, which means insects, basically. Basically, the vectors are insects, like the mosquito. Some, the mosquito can bite a person who have a disease, go fly and land on another person that is healthy one and transmit the, and spread the pathogen from the sick person to the healthy person. And we have many examples for that. If we talk about malaria, malaria was being transmitted and spread through between people through vectors which are mosquitoes. The mosquitoes lie down on a person who is sick, bite the person who is sick and go to bite another person who is healthy. By this way, it can spread the disease from one person to another. But the mosquito itself is not affected. It doesn't have the disease, it's just spread it over and over without having it. So the vectors are living things that can transmit and spread the pathogen without being affected. It can be a mosquito or any other insect. It can spread the disease from animal to human, from human to human, from animal to animal. No, not a must to be between a human and animal. So today we talked about the spread of disease, which we started last time, but last time we start, we, we talked about the first, uh, the first, we can say the first, what? <laughs> last time we took, we told, uh, we started to talk about the spread of disease, and we said the disease can need two things to spread, reservoir and way of spread. Last time we talked about the, the reservoir, which can be human, animal, or other objects, and today we talked about the four main ways of spread. The four main ways of spread is direct contact, indirect contact through air, indirect contact by objects or by a vector. If we visit, if you visit your book, page 718, you will see this table, which is talking about some diseases, how they are caused, how they affect the body system, and how it can spread. Let's take one example from here. Tetanus caused by bacteria, and it affects the nervous system. How it can spread in the soil? This bacteria live in the soil, and if this, if the contaminated object puncture the wound, it will cause the tetanus to transmit into the body and cause the troubles in the nervous system. Chicken box. Chicken box is caused by a virus and it affects the skin. It can be transmitted through droplets or direct contact. So if you are wearing the same clothes, the person who has chicken box is wearing, you can get the infection. If you are breathing with the person who has chicken box, you can get the infection. Or if you are in direct contact with the human being or with the person who have chicken box, you can get the infection. Also malaria. Malaria is caused by protozoa. And protozoa cannot, protozoa is visible. You can see the protozoa. So it cannot enter your body without you feel, you will feel it. And it can come, it affect the blood and the liver. How it can come to your body if I can see the protozoa so I can prevent the protozoa from entering my body. But the mosquito can lie on the protozoa and then come and lie on your body. The mosquito can lie on a contaminated object and then it can come and lie on your body causing malaria to be transmitted from one person or from one object to a person. And these are all examples. Please read it and try to understand. If you have any circumstances or any misconceptions, please contact with me through the email. Thank you and inshallah meet you soon. Goodbye.